everybody, it's Julie. So I was in a group, oh, I'm in a group, and we were having a conversation last night about how you can do the most advanced cooking things, but you screw up something really basic. And a little background on me, I was a line cook that then became a saucier, and then eventually I ended up as a sous chef at a four-star resort. And that is because I called out the least, I showed up on time, and I was loud enough that anybody could hear me. I'm, it's not because of my knife skills, it's not because of my culinary skills. I'm just fat and I like to cook, so there's that. Um, so we were having a discussion about how you can do advanced things but still screw up something really basic. And I took one thing that was on the list that someone said that they screw up and I was like, you know what? I learned how to do this through trial and error. I learned how to do this because I'm a fat chick who likes food and my comfort is bread, cheese, and butter. Like that is my wheelhouse. I will never say no to that. I could be in the worst stages of a depression and I'm still gonna eat a grilled cheese. So that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make a grilled cheese and I'm gonna show you how to make a foolproof grilled cheese. Now, first rule, I will never, ever, ever tell you you need to have professional equipment. As you can see, this kitchen in my apartment is tiny. I can literally touch everything from the center of the kitchen. Um, there are two pieces of professional equipment that we have in this kitchen and they aren't mine. It's my fiance's KitchenAid and her knives. Um, I won't really be busting those out unless you guys want me to break down protein. Um, so this is kind of like what you guys want and I might start doing these once a week. So we're gonna okay, start with so here is absolutely all of the equipment you need for making a grilled cheese. Two slices of bread, some cheese. I have deli monster here and then I just sliced up a block of sharp cheddar, butter, spatula, pan, heat source, very important. And then two plates. Now why two plates? Why two plates? You were gonna see. So I apologize for the angle that this is gonna be at and all of that stuff. And if you hear banging around, it's because they're working on the apartment upstairs. So let's get this going. Sorry. So first things first, you wanna put your burner at about a four. So not quite all the way to the middle, not quite you know, high and not exactly low. You do want to take a pad of butter, a pad of butter and flop that in your pan. We tend to keep our butter at room temperature in a butter keeper. Eventually we'll get a French butter keeper. We don't have one right now. So here's gonna be what takes the longest, getting the butter to melt. <laughs> Cause you don't want it to brown. You don't want it to burn. Um, it's one of the reasons that keeping your butter at room temperature helps. So I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit. I will bring it back down. So what we're using for bread, and this is how you know it's a foolproof recipe. We are using a thick slice of Texas toast. Again, just deli munster. And then thick slices of cheddar cheese. Now I'm doing this to prove that you can make absolutely anything melt when you do it the right way. Um, yes, I am neurotic enough that I laid out my cheese, how it's going to go on the sandwich. <laughs> so I knew I had enough. Now, once your butter starts to melt, you want to take one of your pieces of bread and start sliding it around in the butter. So it gets coated. It means you don't have that weird, like divot in your bread, especially if you're using a softer bread, like a white or um, in this case, Texas toast. I actually might've used a little too much butter. Oh well, it's gonna be a really well greased sandwich. So you wanna make sure that you get it in all the corners and all of that. Pick up the second slice of bread and that you are going to do the same thing with, getting it well coated on all sides, rolling it around, just soaking up the butter on that bread. What you guys didn't see is that I washed my hands, I washed my phone, 
I washed everything that I'm touching before I started touching it. So this is in fact a clean kitchen. Now, I'm gonna take my cheese and lay it out on my bread. And I'm gonna pull this down back to a four because I don't want that to burn. And put my cheese over it. Now, why did I have that second plate? Set my timer for four minutes. Now, the whole reason of having the second plate is so that it actually ends up working to keep all the steam in, help melt the cheese without having to raise the temperature on the burner. So then you actually get the nice melty melty cheese without having to burn your bread. Some people use mayonnaise, some people use oil, some people use, I can't believe it's not butter, some people use margarine. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to do exactly what I do. If you want pepper jack, do pepper jack. If you want Colby, do Colby. If you just want straight American, do American. You're feeling sassy, you wanna throw some bacon in here, do that too, just make sure it's already cooked. No food poisoning, please. Um, yeah, so we're gonna let this cook for three minutes and then I will be back. Okay, so the timer's gone off. Lift the lid. Um, if you don't have asbestos fingers like me, you are going to probably want a pot holder for that. So, so you can see our cheese is actually starting to get pretty gosh darn melty. We're going to throw on our second slice of bread and flip. Now, because we had already pre-warmed the butter and all of that, it actually gets a crust pretty quickly. And I like my grilled cheese kind of pale or golden. So, lid goes back on, this time only for three minutes instead of four. And a lot of people have that issue with grilled cheese where one side is gonna be a little bit more well done than the other and it's because they don't shorten the time for the flip. So using the lid helps. You can use an actual lid if you have like fancy enough um, cooking accoutrement. Generally, we have, we have what works and that includes our very fancy IKEA plates, not sponsored. So that's been going for almost two minutes. We have one minute left. Part of me really wants to take off this lid. I'm actually gonna turn down the heat a little so it's now between the, the three and the four. I'm going to take off the lid. It's nice and steamy in there. And uh, let's get this up a little bit. And you can see that the cheese is pretty melted in the middle. Not completely, but it's getting there. It's actually starting to ooze out the side a little bit, which is one of the reasons you want to use something like Munster or cheddar or just any good melting cheese. Um, and it's not that hard. It's just remembering to, with certain things, you want to go a little bit slow, you want to go a little bit low, and that you don't have to cook things for so long. If you want a more well done grilled cheese or a darker grilled cheese or a more crusty grilled cheese, put it in for longer. Do it at a higher temperature. Go nuts. I don't care. I'm just letting you know this is how you can make a pretty gosh darn perfect grilled cheese every time. And so I've got one side that's pretty nice and like bronzy. And then the first side is fairly golden. Just slide that out onto my little plat here. And because this is the important part, you saw how thick that cheese was, is getting a really good pull where everything is all melted and gooey. 
So that's how you get basically a perfect grilled cheese. So now that my hands are covered in butter, I'm gonna go wash them and tuck into this. So hopefully with any luck, we can get this going and we can get better at some basics or some, I can't believe I can't get this right. And I'm gonna learn a few and you guys are learn a few because towards the end of this, I'm gonna attempt pancakes with my fiance. So thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for something that's like, I should know how to do this, how come I can't? Put it down below. Um, if you have questions, comments, cares, concerns, well, that's what the comment box is for. So I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.